Okay. You know, the last meeting, um, I didn't get a recording. Yeah, you know what? I have to look. Um, do you remember how I didn't have my laptop charger? My All right. Died. I might not have the recording, but I'll look tonight. I'll look after we're done. So did you okay. see too, like, do you see how the bridge is here? Hopefully we have it. I just haven't, do you see how the bridge is here? So what I can do is almost arch my brush. Yeah, you know, the video is not very clear, so it's hard for me to see, but I take your word. For well, you should make see. my screen. I'm going to pin my screen. My screen should be totally sharp. It's well, is that better? Mm. I don't know why it's not clear. It should be perfectly clear. Yeah, it's a little, okay, I see it better now, yes. But it's not perfectly clear. Even your, your image is fuzzy. Um, okay, well, you're not, but it's perfectly clear on my end. And maybe when you watch it in the video, it'll be better. I don't know why it's, maybe okay, because it's yeah. uh, on the Wi-Fi, I don't know. Maybe it's my room. I have to look into that. Yes. Maybe maybe it's your room. It should be perfectly clear. It's perfectly clear on my end, and you're perfectly uh -huh. clear to me. So, I don't know. Okay. So let's. I'll just keep working. We can. Yeah. Um. All right. So I did the arch. I did perfectly clear in the middle. So anywhere like there's a sky or a face, I'm gonna try to be perfectly clear. So remember, I got the texture over here by brushing up and down, right? Just continually right. brushing like this, right? And then you didn't fuse it before you not put yet. the I'm second. Not, not yet, I'm not, I didn't really do a second. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna fuse it now. I'm gonna uh -huh. fuse it now. I'm just kind of trying to show you the strokes. I'm, I'm gonna fuse it now. Oh, okay. So again- But like, even if you were on your own and you were trying to put a second coat, do you fuse the first coat before you put the second coat? Yeah, you should fuse every layer. Oh, every layer. Every layer, but not like if I worked up here and I worked down here, that's not a layer. A layer is on the same area. Right. Okay. On the same, yes. All right. So I don't, I'm going to go ahead. I've got a lot of wax on here. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse it. And again, I'm going to use that, that kind of. I'm going to use that slow motion technique. And I don't want to get rid of any of the texture that I have. So I'm not going to let the heat gun stay there. Now down here, if I really want it smooth, I'm going to keep it here longer. And I really want it smooth. So I'm going to keep it here for a long time. And I can tell right now, I can tell that I basically liquefied it can you see can you see that i liquefied it and it's now it's hard to it's hard to tell yeah. okay well you have to believe me you'll watch the video later so what i yeah, do I, believe. I totally liquefied it which means that what's going to happen now is it's going to cool as if it were ice right and it's going to be totally because i know it happened to mine so i can imagine yeah right so it's totally smooth which is nice because I have tons of texture up here and then I have the bridge and then I have totally smooth. So what that gives me is it gives me contrasty um, textures, right? So I know that this, the texture represents like trees and wildlife and then the quiet represents water, right? Okay, also, yeah. um, what I did with the dabbing looks exactly like the tree that I was dabbing, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait, wait for it to cool for a minute. I'm going to wait for it to cool. Yeah. And then I'm going to maybe scrape it a little bit with one of my pottery tools or my palette knife, right? And you always want to make sure that your tools are clean. Mm -hmm. So you can clean them. And then you can kind of just, if you have like a hard line, you can just kind of blend the line. Now I see air bubbles or what you were calling like the holes. So when I'm scraping the wax like this, I'm gonna get some wax um, on the end of my tool. And what I can do is put it back onto the surface and literally like push it in. Do you see how I did that? So I took the wax on my tool and I went over the hole and it came off my tool and I scraped it into the hole. 
So that makes it perfectly smooth. Now, if I wanted to get rid of any of the lines that I made, I could grab my heat gun and just hit it, which will also just help get rid of any of those little marks that I made. Does that make sense? Yes. And so, then, so, but your wax was not completely dry when you did. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. It wasn't, I mean, it was pretty cool when you started to remove okay yeah i mean it wasn't liquid and it was yeah it was pretty cool i mean i was confident that it was going to work for me uh -huh. um, and i didn't so is that a good habit to have it half and half like not completely cold but then um, not too warm i i think I think it can't be too warm or you'll just scrape it off. You won't have anything left there, you know? Right. Um, right. I think that you just have to kind of go, you know, go with the flow a little bit. Um, you have to kind of go with the flow and just try to feel it. If it's too soft and when you're scraping it, if it's just coming right off like butter, it's not cool enough. You have yeah. to give it more time. That's what I, yeah, that's what I was saying. And the wax will tell you, you know, just, you have to go at it gently. But yeah. like, this is really nice. I mean, I'm, it's a shame you can't see it, but it's like, basically I have, like, basically I have 50-50. I have like half textured, like I have perfectly smooth down here and I have totally textured up here. Mm. Okay. Okay. So the difference too with the colors, once you start adding the pigment sticks, is that if it's totally smooth, the pigment stick is gonna be a little bit more like runny and just like slide over the top. Um, with the texture, it's gonna go into the spaces where there's texture, right? So because there's right. like, because there's depth here, it's gonna go into those spaces. So what colors do you have? What colors, what colors do, I do I have? Yeah, for um, pigment stick. I have a variety. Um, yellow, blue. There's. Okay. I have a lot. You have a lot of different colors. Okay, so. I'm going to use a lot of colors too. Let's just say I, you know, I mean, there's no end to how many colors you can use. There's no rules on that. Let's just talk about the basics of the pigment stick. So the it's pigment such a shame stick, that the Wi-Fi is not good. Well, I'm not having any problems with the Wi-Fi on my end, so it must be my Wi-Fi is great. It, it must be mine, yeah. Well, are you in um? Are you in the basement? No, I'm not. Uh, where Where are you? Are you in your? Are you? Where is your? I'm room? near a window. I'm upstairs. Oh, you're upstairs. But where is the router in your house? Um, not too far from me. Oh, well, you should be fine. I gotta. Yeah, I have to. But you know, the other day when we did it, yeah. I didn't have a problem. Well, I'm telling you, today is a wacky day for Wi Fi. I don't know what. Maybe that's what it is. Because I mean, last time I could see it perfectly. Yeah, I don't yours. know. I don't. Well, it's up to you. We can reschedule our session or you can watch the video. I'm just looking yes. Yeah. I'll yeah. just hopefully. When I watch the video, yeah. it'll be more clear. Yeah. I'm just looking for a sign. Okay. Looking for a piece of, uh, so these are pigment sticks. These are pigment sticks. I'm just going to use, I can't find my tissue paper right this second. I'm just going to use aluminum foil. All right. So usually I use Usually I use um, wax paper, but I'm just going to use the aluminum foil for right now because I don't know why I can't find any wax. So this would be just for a palette, but you can use um, kitchen wax paper. 
um, you're going to want to just have some type of palette, right? So I'm going to put the paints on here, right? Okay. So I'm going to put the different colors on the palette, right? And the reason I do this is so that I can mix them together. And you can see um, how pretty the colors are. Here's blue, or I'm sorry, brown and off white. Here's like, um, this is like tight and buff. Is that green? No, this is like cream color, like um, coffee ice, like light cafe au lait. This is yellow. Can you see the yellow? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm gonna yeah. have. Okay, here's some teal. Okay, some chartreuse green. Here's some green. There you go. All right, and let's see. Oh, and this is nice. This is um, this is actually brown. This is actually brown pink, which is a nice color too. It's kind of it's actually a pretty famous RNF color. It's it's almost it's really pretty. It's like um, it's like translucent orangey. Okay, so these are my colors, and mm -hmm. I can mix them together on the palette. So whatever you're using for a palette, it could be like a styrofoam plate. It could be a piece of wax paper, right? You can mix these colors right on here before you start painting, yeah. or you can mix them on the palette, right on the wax. So let's just say I'm going to start with the sky, and I'm going to make it like a light blue green. I can just I paint with my fingers. I was just going to ask you, yeah. I paint with my fingers, so I literally just apply the paint onto the wax. You could also paint from the sticks. So you can literally, huh. or you can use a paintbrush. But I- No, I love the finger idea. <laughs> I love the finger idea too. <laughs> Some people think I'm, crazy. but like say, I just like touching it and I like rubbing the, so then once I do, I can also take like a piece of the, um, of the, this is actually a piece of the wrapper of the pigment stick wrapper that I peeled off and I'm just rubbing it on there. So your uh -huh. texture is going to be fairly, when you first put it on, it's going to be kind of opaque, right? And you know, you know, those words, I always, I always like those are vocabulary words, right? Like opaque and translucent. So opaque is like, you can't really see the picture. You can't see the photo anymore when it's opaque. Mm -hmm. But if you add, they make a product and I don't know if you bought this. I don't remember if I told you to buy this or what, but you're probably gonna want it. It's called um, a blending medium. A blend medium? Blending. Blending medium. Yeah. No, a, I don't have that. Okay, so it's a little bit like, um, Vaseline uh -huh. for painting. And what it does is it, it will dilute. So here's the blending medium on my fingers and I'm rubbing it onto the tree, uh -huh. right? And then I'm gonna rub it around and then I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm actually gonna rub it off. So what the blending medium does is it thins the paint so that uh -huh. it can become like more, um, manageable and can kind of go into the spaces around it right and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to wipe with the paper towel and what happens when i wipe with the paper towel is i'm going to bring back the photo right and it leaves making... a residue a little bit i don't use the razor blade no unless i want that razor no, no i said it leaves a residue of the paint oh, it, le right? it leaves yeah, it leaves um, a translucent sort of, yeah, uh, film. It leaves like a more mm -hmm. translucent film. But like, uh -huh. look how pretty that sky is. And then look, I could add some yeah. yellow. You can tone it, right? And you don't always have to blend it. I'm a big blender because I like the idea of seeing the photo. And I like making these colors. I think all of the r and I think that all of the RNF paints are pretty. Can you see it now? Can, you can't see it. I can't. It's pretty blurry, but yes. 
I wonder if you're comes in. A, I'm trying to use my imagination too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wonder if your screen. Has oh, a maybe text it to me. I'm going to text you a picture of it. Right? I wonder if your screen has low resolution. Oh, let me see if I can change. But again, last time it was fine. Well, maybe you changed your screen from last time. I just changed one to the other. It's the same. I don't know. I just sent you pictures of the palette. Okay. Did that help? Let's see. Oh, you mean you te you emailed it to me? I just te I or texted. texted. I sent you pictures on your phone. Okay, I ha I don't have it yet. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> yes, I see. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead with a dark color. Right, and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a dark color in all the dark areas. So basically, when you're when you're painting, I kind of consider it like painting by numbers. So wherever I see a dark color in my photo, I add dark paint. So I'm trying to like reenact the photo, but through the layers of wax and paint. Right. Are you pushing that paper towel pretty hard on there or just gently? Um, it's pretty hard. I mean, I'm going to go back and forth between using the, I'm going to go back and forth between using the paper towel and using the medium. The paper towel is going to like lift it more and the medium is going to thin it more. But in a way, I'm kind of like, over painting the actual piece okay. so that I can kind of push it back. It's kind of like it, it's the rub same it off. The, yeah, it's the same with the wax. Like I think it's always better to add more wax and then subtract. And uh -huh. sort of not add enough. Okay. Wax. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. I'd always I rather, got yes. I'd rather have too much wax and scrape it off than not have enough. Now, the other thing that we can do to this is called incising. And I'm not sure if we talked about incising last time. No. Okay, so incising no. means drawing into the surface, right? So this incising. is- Incising. Yeah, it means drawing in. So I'm gonna send you a couple of up close detail photos of texture and what it looks like with pigment stick on there because this is one of the reasons that I love the pigment stick is because the wax has such a beautiful texture, it, like all by itself. And the pigment stick shows off that texture. So I'm gonna send you a detailed picture of what I'm talking about so that you um, can try it. Cause I can see you fine. I don't really know why you can't see me, but. All right, so this is a deep. I know. This is a very detailed picture of the gray pigment stick in wax texture. And what I did was I did that kind of heavy brush stroke and I pushed the, you know, pushed, put the pigment stick on there and then I used a little bit of medium and then I rubbed it pretty hard. Yeah, like you're polishing a shoe. And uh -huh. it actually, to me, it actually looks like a tree. So in sizing, I use like a needle. This is a plastic knitting needle. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is actually like, oh, okay. I'm actually going to draw in the wax little, little lines that look like um, tiny little leaves of a, of a weeping willow tree. You know what I mean? And sometimes I just even like to put little dots in the texture of the wax because I think it's pretty.
Okay, and then once I drew those little lines in there, they're kind of invisible, but I can take any colored pigment stick. Let me just take another color just for argument's sake. And I can go, it's almost like I can push the pigment stick into the lines, into the lines and then wipe it off. So when I wipe off, what part is coming off? Just the what? Just the top, right? Around it. Yeah, Around so it's right. Thing, so the yeah. paint's gonna stay in there. So do you see? See, so right now this looks like kind of weird. It's like, like I, a big thing up, yeah. Right, but what I'm gonna but do, do you put that medium on before yeah. I wipe you wipe it off. Or I'm gonna put go a little straight? bit of the, no, I'm gonna put a little bit of the medium on there, and I'm gonna push down, and then I'm gonna wipe it off, and it's gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna take a picture of it. So it's like I drew these beautiful little green. And then if I wanted it to be another color and not so green around the outside, I could use, this is where I think you mentioned, I could use the scraping technique and get back to sort of a little bit of a lighter color because I have wax underneath. So I could remove the top, top layer, which has paint on it and get down to sort of like the whiter color. So I'll take a picture of this too. Just so, it's so pretty. Wait till you see it. You're gonna love it. Huh. Are you getting the photos okay? Yeah, the photos are very clear and nice. Yeah. Okay, so here's the green. And you can see the little lines I made in there and how I put the green paint in there. I just sent that one. Oh, nice. Oh, I see. Yeah. Very nice. So as a whole idea, when you work on a piece, like, do you kind of have an idea where you're going to go? No, I generally just like combine techniques and go with the flow. I mean, um, I don't think I have like a total plan. I mean, sometimes I might be so you more just enjoy the process. Yeah, I think I think sometimes I might have more of an idea about which techniques I'm interested in practicing and which uh -huh. materials. So because there are more, there's more than one, you know, type of encaustic paint, and there's more than one way to sort of like do the same thing. It's kind of like like when you feel like driving someplace, you know, there's more than one road to drive on, right? You can drive on the freeway or you can drive on a back road. You know what I mean? So you really kind of have to, it's gonna be a different experience and it's gonna look different, but you're gonna get to a similar place. I feel the same with the wax, like this technique of using wax medium and painting with pigment sticks is one of my favorites. So mm -hmm. because it's, I think the most, um, Easy, it's easy to control and you can really enjoy sort of just the texture. And you can mm -hmm. take a picture. Uh, I mean, you can make stuff look three dimensional by just using darks and lights. And it really talks to me about painting, about, you know, um, composition, highlights and shadows, lighting, like sort of all the things that I'm interested in, you know? Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be this time that you would add something, on a layer underneath, whether it is, I don't know, a stick or is it, yeah. You mean a you layer on top? I think yeah what do you mean underneath the what do you mean a layer i don't know what you mean by that i mean like other than paint and wax you uh, sometimes use other objects you mean like pieces. stencils like stencils what kind of other objects yeah, yeah, not a stencil like um maybe a lace or a petal or I don't use any real um, flat. I don't use any real flowers in my work. I might use a piece of lace or a texture. 
So we can do that. Okay. Let's, if we wanted to add wax to this, um, if we wanted to add wax to a painted um, pavement stick area, we would need to hit it with the heat gun because right now it's wet. Uh huh. So in order for it to be what I would call dry, I would need to use it. And that is a possibility. Or we could let this one dry for a week and then do it. Does that make sense? Uh huh. Yes, totally. So like imagining a week would be a good time that it would settle into place. Right. So I, my options are to either yeah, use it, which means I can dry it instantly or let it like cure and dry on its own time, which would take about a week. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay so let's say we're gonna fuse an area and like in a landscape like this, I mean, maybe I could add lace at the bottom because that might look like um, these rocks, right? So it might be, mm. I'm gonna add a texture. Okay, so I'm gonna fuse the bottom. So you wouldn't, in other words, use little pebbles right there to add it. No. Because it's I, too um, I, I wouldn't. You, you can, I just don't like um, organic materials like that in my wax. I just use uh -huh. the wax itself as texture. I don't really add. Yes, I get it. So, but technically, because I just fused all of that at the bottom, I can add another layer of wax onto it. And um, the color is still there. So let me get a texture. I'm gonna get, grab some textures and you can pick which one you like. And then I'll put them on there. Okay. So let's start with some of the basic ones, which are like grocery store bags and You mean stencils or? No, I'm going to, no, I'm just going to use like fat fibers, like fabric, uh, tech, um, synthetic textures, simple textures. I'm not going to do step. Stenciling is actually very complicated. Stenciling is, um, Stenciling is complicated and there's many parts to stenciling. So today we can work on this. We could do stenciling another time. Okay. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe I don't have this. Um, I have the best one too. Well, these two are two of my favorites. So this is actually um, like burlap. Like a raffia or something. Yeah, kind of like a potato a bag, maybe. I have something like that, yes. Okay, and then you this. You just rip it apart a little bit. Yeah, yes, exactly. You could, right, I pulled it apart. And this one already has wax on it, so it has. And then this one is, um, I don't know what, this one has like holes. Uh -huh. So this one's kind of cool. Uh, I might hold on. Um, hold on, my heating pad turned. Hold on one second, my thing turned off. Oh no, it didn't. Hang on, what's the why? Oh. oh, my wax turned off for a second. I don't know why. I don't know why. So these, this, this type of layering is so fun and this can go on and on and on. I mean, there's no end to how many layers you can kind of make, you know? Um, let's, so what's, because the rocks go- going, I can't hear you. Do I freeze? I can't hear you. I must have frozen. Yeah. Hello? Oh, okay. You're okay. You're back. <laughs> I'm going in and out. So you can really pick the texture the way you want it, right? Uh -huh. And you can 
you know, also decide if you want it sideways, right? You can move it around. You can cut your textures. Mm -hmm. um, you could leave your textures in the wax, right? Mm -hmm. So is that why you heated up your wax so that can go in it? Yeah, I'm gonna brush the wax over it. Uh, and over, but I mean the layer before you just- No, I heated it. that, no, I heated that up to dry the paint. Uh -huh. To dry the paint. Oh, okay. Because I don't want to put another layer of wax on wet paint. It'll slide okay. right off. Okay. So okay. I had to secure the layer underneath by drying it. Drying it. So that I could put wax on top of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I kind of patted this down. Mm -hmm. So it sticks here. So I just pressed it with my fingers. I can send you a picture. I'm just waiting for my... I think I, it, this was a little clearer to me. Oh, well, that's great. Uh, I'm gonna take a picture. So there- See, It comes and goes, but yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a good color. I just love this. This is actually one of my favorite. This is actually one of my favorite stencil pieces, this one. I bet, because especially for this landscape too. Yeah, I just think that, I just have to wait for my wax for a minute. Um, also, I don't know if you know, can see this, but in order cleaning the stencils, uh -huh. I just put them on the hot plate. Oh. And then I heat them up and then I wipe them out with paper towels. Not in the same temperature as before, it wouldn't burn, right? You just leave it on there for like a second. Yeah. So you just put it on the hot plate. The other thing I was going to ask you, can you keep the hot plate on all the time? Um, no, only when I'm working. Only when you're working. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to leave it on all the time. I mean, unless you're going to like come and go. Come and go, then I was thinking it was... And then do you find yourself adding wax all the time? Well, yeah, you're going to run out because you're using it. Yeah, it doesn't evaporate much, right? No, but you're going to use it. Yeah. You use it in the artwork. You do end up using it like it does take away. So I have to get bigger bags of that too. Yeah, you can buy it in... Uh, five, you can buy it in larger quantity or multiple mm -hmm. bags. You're going to, you'll decide how much you're painting. And yeah. And from know, fine art, do you think, or Amazon? I buy from fineartstore.com because I just am like a support, you know, I like to support them. Okay. And I feel like my, you know, my money isn't a lot of money, but you know, I'd rather give it to them than give it to Amazon. Them, okay, yeah, meet yeah, them. Yeah, they're to really Amazon. nice people, and they make they make paint colors and they host workshops. Uh -huh. you know, I mean, I just think that all of that stuff is good for okay. paint caustics. So I'm you a, said five pound bags. They do make five pound bags. Yeah, um, that'll last you a good a good while. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and then you can. Yeah, I mean, it's probably easier than you know, continually having to buy more. Yeah, because I want to have everything here and then yeah. not to run out. Yeah, also you're going to decide, you know, as you um, get better, you're going to decide if you like to add the color with the pigment sticks or add the color with the encaustics. So we haven't done encaustics yet and we okay. we could do another lesson to do the actual encaustics because they, um, you have to melt them down and put them on. Okay, so. Let's do both of these textures together. I'm just gonna do them side by side. Oh, okay. interesting. So um, I'm gonna take a picture of this just so you have it. Uh, oh, I got this other one. Oh, that's great. Which one? The one, the texture. Yeah, it's cool, right? These are pretty colors too. I like these, the blues and greens and stuff. All right. So, all right, my wax is ready. I'm going to use this little brush. I don't know if we talked about these little brushes, but I love them. They come from the hardware store. 
I always call them like they're like my mighty mouse brushes. <laughs> you see them? They're like little. They're little. But they're the hockey ones. No, they're they're probably for wood staining. Wood staining brushes from the hardware store. I would think that's easier for me too. Well, they're so cute. They're so little. Now they won't do a big long stroke, but they'll do these textures very nicely. Right? Yes. Okay. So, so there we put the wax on top. And then we have to wait and we're not going to use the heat gun. Oh, okay. No, because the heat gun would liquefy the texture, right? Yes, that's true. Yeah, right. Right. So, and then do you paint on top of that? We're going to pull it out. We're going to pull it out. Oh. Yeah, we're not going to leave it in there. Now, technically, you could leave it in there. Oh. You could leave it in there, but often I, I pull it out. I just That's think interesting. I thought you were going to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like to pull it out and leave. I, I always call it like the footprint. Uh huh. So here I go. So now it's cool. So I'm going to pull it out, and it's going to leave. Yes. It's going to leave like a trace. And then this is a perfect example of when I can use the pigment sticks to go into for lack of a better word, like the waffles, like into the nukes and crannies, okay. right? It's all like one, yeah, nothing I can't see. And you're frozen. Okay, well, I'll be back. But you're gonna send me a photo, so. Yeah, I'll send you a photo. Can you hear me though? Yeah, no, I can hear you. So I want to be very careful with this about. Um, oh, I want to be very careful with this about um, fusing it, right? Because I don't want it to go away. So this is kind of like literally. I just sent you two pictures on your phone you can look at them i literally sent you like a before and after mm -hmm. okay now the third step is going to be to add the pigment stick so because we had brown down here before i'm just going to go ahead with brown right but mm -hmm. i can mix the colors as i put the pigment sticks in there i don't always just have to eat right so here's brown now, the really cool thing about this is that when you rub the sticks on here, you're going to have a top. It's like outside inside. So you're going to have a top and a bottom, right? So mm -hmm. the top is where the wax is smooth and the bottom is where the where the fabric was. So there's like an indentation. Mm -hmm. Right, because it made like a mold. It, basically it was made, enough and you pushed it in enough. No, I, co I covered, no, I covered, I covered the fabric with wax. With wax. And yeah. then pulled the wax away. So I now have like a positive and negative. I have three, I have something three dimensional. Okay, so you had the wax, you put the lace on top, pushed it in. No, no, oh yeah, just to secure it. Just, just I pushed it there so it didn't slip away. Right. Then you pulled it out and it left a mark. Well, after, yeah, I brushed the wax on and then I pulled it out. Oh, you did brush wax on there. Yeah, I did brush wax on there, yeah. A oh, lot I of wax. I yeah. missed that. Yeah, I took that little brush, remember we were oh, talking about right, the right, brush? right, right. Okay. Yeah, oh, and the picture is back. It's beautiful. So, so, so I put the, I put the wood staining brush. I added all the wax, then I added the brown pigment. And then watch what happens when I start to rub it. Is that the brown is in the line? I can't see anything. You can't see that. Yes. Yes. I see something. Yes. So, oh. so it 
made it looks like an aerial it looks like a train track or like a, yeah. something it kind of reminds you if there's a bridge right because right right well now there's a bridge over it kind of looks like a bridge it's nice these two textures next to each other but i'll take another picture for you i see so you put a wax on top of that and then you pulled it out i'll do it again we'll do it i'll do it again okay i'll do it again it's three steps yeah i just sent you the what i'll do it again you ready so yes. we'll do the other side so that we'll have texture all along the bottom and then i put the okay brush. okay so and you could write this down. So if you had a piece of paper, we can write down the steps. Are you ready? I do. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So we picked the texture that we wanted, right? So we have the string and we're we're making a pattern. So we'll do the same again. We'll do the stringy thing. Right? The burr and the we'll just call it a potato sack. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the burlapy thing. And then also let's go, maybe we'll go because we went horizontal the first time. Let's go vertical the second time. Okay. So. Okay. All right. And then we're going to put the other one, the holy one. Okay. We're going to put the holy one over here. No pun intended. Ah, <laughs> pun intended, pun intended. Pun the, intended. Ho the holiest, the holiest pattern <laughs> of all the holy pattern okay all right so we're gonna go a little bit bigger i'm gonna so we just and i and just again so it's sticking to it because the wax is still warm it's sticking or? to it just because it's wax is kind of sticky and okay. i'm pressing it down yeah right i'm sticking to it because it's kind of sticky and i'm pressing it down okay so all right so i wish that, that was there doing it with you Okay, so then the, that's step number one. Step number yeah. two is to get that little brush, that little brush, this one, mm -hmm. and add the wax over, over the material. And you can add, you can go, you can go wherever you want. I also use, remember the dabbing technique? Yeah. Right, so that's kind of like up, down, right the dabbing technique and you're just going to go up and down right and then you're kind of like you're now just, i'm beginning to see a little bit more okay so you're through. just filling it in a little bit and then you're just going to wait because you got it you need to wait till it cools down yeah You gotta let it cool down. Oh wait, hang on one second. So you gotta wait one second, let it cool down. Did you let the dog out? Oh, get a rock. Okay. So I'm just waiting. I mean, I don't know. You could count to thirty. You know, it's like you'll see. You're yeah. really. You'll start to know when the wax is hot and the wax is cold. You know, you'll. You'll really be it able to. It depends on the room temperature, like if it's cooler where you are, or. Um, I don't. I don't actually. I think the wax still cools down in the summertime. I don't think it has that much to do with the. I mean, I think in the summertime the wax is just always kind of softer, but it still cools down. I mean, there's definitely a melting point and a not melting point. Uh -huh. All right. So, I'm gonna go ahead and. You can see. Can you see this? Yes, now I can see it. Yes. Okay, so again, in a way, in a way, like there's something very, I think, beautiful about a lot of texture on a piece. Yes, yes, I agree. I, I don't tend, I, I tend to like shy away from leaving the material in the artwork. Uh -huh. um, I'd rather just have the pattern than the actual material. Although uh -huh. I do think that the material looks beautiful. Okay, yeah, so, I do too. Now that I can see it, I'm like, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it out. You froze, unfortunately. Okay. I'm oh, gonna, okay. Here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it out. Hold on. It's 
some of the wax is being lifted with it, right? Yeah, I lost some. It's yeah, sometimes it doesn't it doesn't all stay. Uh -huh. But you know what, I'm usually pretty happy like with what I get, you know, and I, I'm a little bit wary about fusing a heavy texture like this because if I fuse it, it might just blend together. Yeah, so, so good. So if I, if I get something I really love, I might skip the fusing part mm -hmm. because sometimes the texture, I mean, what's gonna happen? You know, you want to just make sure, do you see, I don't know if you can see, you want to make sure that it like stays on there. But here, right. I'm going to take a close up picture. I mean, this is a really beautiful texture, just itself beautiful. Well, the other photo you sent me was already so nice. Right, this one looks like there's like an eyeball there. And, and this looks like, like a an abstract thing. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, yeah. Wait, let me send you a close up. It's so cool. So let's put a different color in it. Since we did brown in the other one, maybe we should put a nicer color in here. So we could put, what color do you think? We could put yellow in here mm -hmm. or green. We could also hit it with the heat gun. I mean, if I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun, I'm gonna hit it really gentle. Because, so it doesn't because, melt, yeah. because I don't want it to go bye-bye, yeah. You don't want to lose the end. But I also don't want it to fall off. So like you got to air, you know, use your best judgment. Yeah, I see some blush color now. Yeah, I do see the pink color in there. And I wonder if that came off the dye. Oh, of, right. Of the, I wonder if it came off this dye, the dye. Of yeah, it. yeah. But, or maybe, I know I like it though. So I could put a pink color in here. Do you want me to put pink in here? With the brown or... There's so many like blues and greens and stuff in here. I mean, it's a really, yeah. it's a really pretty piece. We do it's just, just the right up. accent there. Um, yeah, let's put, you know what? Let's put something fun in there. How about, let me see. I'm gonna see what it looks like if I mix the brown, pink and the yellow together. Okay. It could make like a nice peachy color. It's pretty, do I, how about a peachy color? Yep. Or let me see if I have anything red. I might have this a little bit of red. Let me see. I don't have any bright. I could get some red though. I, I have red. Let me see. Hold on, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna see if I have a red. All right, so I wanted after this, I want to take a few minutes for you to try either a stent like a, a form, a thing, or try painting with your um or try painting with your pigment sticks. Okay. Do you know what I mean? You can choose which one you want to do. Either way. Well, what do you? They're all new to me. Or so you can do all fun. Do yeah. Maybe we have time for both. All right. And again, like, oh, that's a pretty color. I look at the other picture, hoping that I could see. Never mind. What other picture? No, the picture on my text is on my other screen. I'm like, okay, let me see what's happening. But yeah, well, I, I think, I think okay. what's gonna happen, I'm, I'm hoping what's gonna happen is that when you watch the- um, Video. The video, and then you'll- It'll come better, right? Yeah, I'm hoping. Hoping. Yeah, because it looks perfect from my end and I should be recording it the way I'm seeing it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, a, I mean, I try my best with technology, but you know, it's, yeah, it's hard. I'm not, you know, like we didn't, oh my God, I met this lady. I took my mom to the, to get cataract surgery today. And Ooh. I was waiting for her on a bench. And I don't know, like, when was the last time you actually sat in public on a bench? Yeah, no. So this lady came and sat down next to me and was like, I don't think she'd sat down next to anybody on a bench. She talked to her in probably like a long time. And she just talked nonstop for a lot, for a while. Oh my God, for a while. And I just talked to her. I mean, I didn't care. I had nothing else to do. I just, she was a very nice woman and lives by herself, you know, doesn't have anybody. 
she literally took the bus all the way to the hospital just to practice it so that when she actually has oh. so that when she actually has the surgery she's hoping she'll remember how to get home oh i know i know i felt like i should have just told her to call me i'd take the day off of work and i know <laughs> oh my god i mean seriously like there was nobody to take her no nobody to take her I know. I, now I regret it. I, that surgery, and they tell you not afterwards. She I, should not be in a room that has the lights. What are the new lights? Oh, I don't know. Oh, in in in, in infrarescent or ir, ir, infrarescent or something. No, it's a certain kind of a light that we use more, light bulb. Oh, that new eco lights or whatever. Something like that. That he should not be in those. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's, okay. They'll tell you. She doesn't even, this woman didn't even, she doesn't even own a cell phone or anything. Oh, wow. I know. I know. She's 81 years old. She looks great. I mean, she's adorable, but I was like, you're, whatever. you're, wow. I know. Wow. She was a librarian. Does your mom live near you? She lives, I can drive to her. She lives, she lives, um, she lives about, 20 15 to 20 minutes but you know the problem with our area and i don't know about your area is that they're just building and building and building and so it's just getting more congested oh yeah so going anywhere is just like a lot harder yeah it takes longer and there's more traffic to deal with you know uh -huh. okay yeah. so let's um which I think is harder for old, for dry age. I won't, I don't even like dry, you know, I can deal with it, but barely. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. All right, so I'm not sure about the pink. I did end up kind of just blending it. I kind of like it natural. I don't know if you can uh -huh. see it. Anymore. You took away the pink. I can see it better now. I like the contrast of the brown. I didn't like the pink. It was too, I mean, if anything, well, if anything, the I'd bottom see. looks like it's a walkway or something, and then there's some flowers and other grains growing. That's how I see it. Yeah, I mean, it could be anything. That's the thing about, like, that's the thing about wax texture is it can really, and it's so interesting. I think everybody's eye kind of catches like the three dimensional aspects yeah. of it differently. You know, it's all about processing. And because you're layering the photo, the wax, the paint, the wax, it's mm -hmm. almost like you're layering, you know, numerous um, different things mm -hmm. together. All right, I'm gonna stop for now. Why don't you um, take an opportunity to, I'm gonna switch the screen. Why don't you try your pigment sticks on one of the pictures of the girls? Which one the O? Oh. The big one or the two section one? I like the two, I like them both. I would, I mean, you could, why, which, why don't you start with the one that you did, we did together before, which is the bigger one. Okay. And then you can do the littler one by yourself. Okay. I can help you. Yes. Now, I, sh I see you put your finger, which is I love. Uh -huh. Do you think, does it come off easily? I just use, yeah, I use, um, I actually use, have you ever heard of Dr. Bronner's soap? No. You could use any, have you ever like, used like a, an oatmeal soap or um, anything like with a, like with a texture in it might work or mm -hmm. uh, any dishwashing soap. I just use regular hand soap or like a um, Myers soap, any type of, they make artists. I have Meyer, yeah. Yeah, Myers. I love the Myers products. I use the Myers yeah. products or any type of. Okay. Soap. Yeah, it washes right off with soap and water. So I shouldn't wear gloves right now. You can, if you want, you can wear gloves. I don't love the gloves because I feel like I can't touch the surface. I feel it, I get it. Yeah, I can't touch the surface, but if you want to wear gloves, you can. Definitely wear gloves. I'll yeah, start with it and then see it. And then the other thing is. Wait, hang on. I'm going to. Here's my palette, the paper wax. 
Yeah, you make a palette so it can be uh, whatever you have. Sorry, I, I don't know why. I usually use wax paper. I don't know where all my wax paper is right now, but uh -huh. I usually use wax paper. Um, you know, just cut right kitchen wax paper. Yeah, now I have this. So, um, so that picture of her, I would say kind of soft colors. Yeah, I would say soft colors, but you can even put like, um, yeah, soft colors. You could put a some little blue, blue, maybe some browns and some creams. A little blue. You could put, um, huh? So, and then you're just, I mean, you're trying this for like the first time. So, you're yeah, I've never. Wanna, you're gonna want to check out opacity colors. Yeah, pick colors you like. It's not really gonna matter. I mean, seriously, it, it, pick what you like. Just it. Okay. Pick whatever. Yeah, whatever is making you happy right now. I mean, uh, this is practice, so I take it out of here. Oh, okay. Keep the paper, and then. Oh, I see. Okay. So yeah, you're just trying to get used to kind of what it feels like. Yes. So you put it right on here. You can put it right on the surface of the wax. You right. can put it on a styrofoam plate. You could put it on that aluminum foil. You know, you can really, you could put it on a, So I have this wax palette. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. Okay, so then this white. A little brown and a little blue. Um and are we thinking which part of her I'm gonna be? You know what I was I'm just gonna say I generally start from the outside in which might or i start from like i don't start with her skin i usually start with the background okay i don't know if that's like part of like just my photo like that makes sense yeah i don't that know if it's just like my photo back too yeah i don't know i just I tend to start with like the background okay and then I work up to maybe like her clothes and then maybe her hair. You know what I mean? I don't, I, just, I don't know. Okay. okay. All right. So you said you don't use black, right? Black. I don't remember saying that. Did I say that? <laughs> I definitely use black. I like black. I like black pigment stick and I like black encaustic. Um, oh, cool. I don't. Oh, I know what you I know what you're referring to. I don't like black photos. Oh, black photos. Oh. Yeah, they're too it's could because what happens is you they contrast, they contrast with the wax. So Okay, yeah. So they, you make it more grayish, yes. They just they create like a resistance to so I'm trying to Does that make sense? 
Like if you put yeah, wax, that. wax isn't wax isn't totally translucent. So if you put something like mid gray or light gray over something black, I feel like it just looks weird. I thought I had three blacks, but it turns out they're deeper colors of gray. Oh, that's okay. So like, That's okay. Use them. What are they? There's no blacks. The, like this, to me, I thought this was black. Mm -hmm. But it's... What's it called? It's called blue yeah. oak. Oh, yeah. Blue ochre. So that's blue black. Blue black. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I have no beautiful. black, unfortunately. I was going to work with that, maybe with her hair later. So, well, that's fine. Okay. I mean, that'll be so black. So, so just start putting your finger, start play, just start playing. I mean, just literally start. Really? Yeah, just start playing. Start rubbing, picking up the colors and rubbing them on the wax. And then you should have a paper. Can you see my palette? Yeah. Oh, okay. And also you want to, um, you can mix the colors together just for fun. See what colors you make. Okay, here I go. Okay. This is very exciting. Good. Okay, I see how it feels like. You like it? It's it's it's. I love doing it. But yeah. And you should have a paper towel. I'm actually on my canvas. I'm just <laughs> like playing. No, that's great. Do you have um, a paper towel? Yes. You need to, a paper towel. So you're gonna end up wasting a lot of paper towels. Okay. One thing about the paper towels. Wait, this is very important. So supposedly, do you see these paper towels in my hand? Mm -hmm. they, these have pigment stick on them because the paper towels are paper and the pigment stick has oils in it. These are combustible. So you can't leave them in the trash can. You have to close the trash can bag and throw them away. If you leave them in your trash can, they might catch on fire. Now I've oh. never, I've never in 20 years had, have had any paper towels catch on fire. Okay. But I'm just telling you, right? Yeah. The combination of the pigment stick and the paper towel Can could be. combust. I think the chances are like like one and um, I don't know. Um, I mean, you know what I mean. I mean, the heating thing is here too. So maybe I should turn this off. I'm not afraid of the, no, that's fine. The palette is fine. It's very mild. But the paper towel and pigment stick combo is supposed to be combustible. I. I don't know. I think if you just put them in like a grocery bag and close the and just close um, it, put it in the trash. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just putting colors on. That's good. Well, you're I have you know, no idea what I'm doing. I'm just that's it. But, well, you have to start somewhere. Yeah, I guess. you have to start somewhere. See, um.
So yeah, when you get a minute, let's see, hold it up to me. And, um, oh, I love it. Nice, beautiful. I love that color. That's so pretty. And you don't, yeah, you don't have to feel obligated to cover the whole panel or paint the whole thing. You can also put the paint on thicker and thinner and you do not have to wipe it off. That's not part of the process. So if you wanted to put the paint on and leave it thick, you can, it's just gonna take longer to dry. And then do you remember what I said was um, the drying agent is what? Drying agent? Yeah, what do you use to assist the drying? The what? Um, What's cool? The heater? Yeah, you yeah. can use the heat gun and you can actually dry the pigment stick like right in the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And even I if you put it on I really thick. I didn't put enough on here so i'm well, sorry you, you can take this put this you can take the stick right to the i was gonna ask you should i you can you can take the stick right to the piece okay. yes exactly yep and you can yeah. put more than one color there and blend it absolutely that's a great idea i mean i was thinking of blue because i took this photo of her at the beach so um, but I don't yeah. know how I would. No, I think that's great. I think blue is beautiful. I think the blue is awesome. Maybe some yellow somewhere. Yeah, and you can mix it right on there. Oh, my fingers got the other um and then i don't approach to go on to her right you what i don't know i would put any yet. colors directly on her face unless you were putting like a little you know peach in her cheek you know i don't i wouldn't put color directly on her face right Where what you said is to work from the outside in, right? Yeah. I work from the outside in. I work from I work from the background to the subject matter. Right. So and I often do what I call I, I create like I joke, it's like a hierarchy. So what's the most important part of the picture is probably her face, you know? Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm just doing this. I'm doing this so you could see it whenever. Yeah. Well, you're doing it too, just to get a feel of it. I mean, you've never done it before. So you yeah. don't have... You don't have the extender stick yet, so you're going to really enjoy You should purchase that, though. Yeah, because I can imagine they're getting hard and it's... Right. So the yeah. extender stick gives you... Right. It's like it's like oiling. It's like putting butter in the pan, you know, for cooking. Yeah. It's like you yeah. need something in there to get, you know, get the best out of the materials and to be able to move them around freely. It also thins it. Oh, I love... I mean, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, okay, so this is my question to you, is do you see how you, the photo ended at the bottom of her hair? Yeah. But what I would do is I would just paint her hair. Yeah. And so that's- just have something come here. Yeah, I would paint her hair. And that to me is like sort of like the fun and the art. And that's where the photography and the painting can kind of go backwards and forwards and sort of have like this interesting conversation because you don't always have to be like so photorealistic. You could also be, um, you know, exploring. Um, so do I need to change the texture of the bottom part in order to paint or? Nope, you're just gonna pick a dark color. So you need to pick a color for her. I don't have black. That's what I was hoping I had black, but I don't. Well, it doesn't have to be, it can be that, use that blue, use that dark, that Net, use that blue you color. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Is 
it's coming out green. It must have been green. The, well, blend it. That's, well, blend it. That's way too thick. You got to blend it in, blend it up her hair and around the side of her face. It could be the, all the blues that are making it great. I mean, yeah, you'd have to put it on white paper to see what color it actually is. I yeah, mean, every, every paint color, every paint color is going to have a, a, a hue to it, right? Uh huh. So this is not good. No, it's not bad. Why would it? Why is it bad? You just do you not because it's kind of green. So you want me to work on that blue from? So wait, okay. So what what tones down? I like it. What tones down? You got to make it darker at the bottom. What other colors do you have? Do you have a dark gray or brown? No, I have brown. Okay, so mix the brown and the green together. That'll look good. Yeah. And just do it right. You can draw, just draw her hair, like as if you're drawing my hair, like right on her, right? Draw it kind of wavy. From here all the yeah, way right, down? Yeah, just, the, just especially the bottom part, because you're now putting paint over bright white, right? So you're not painting over the photo, you're painting over something bright white. Right. And then rub it. Or not. I mean, let's look at it. How much rubbing? I mean, should you over? I, don't know. I didn't. Okay, yeah, blend it. So you don't always have to rub. So blending, right, is softer. So your blending is kind of like back and forth, up and down without wiping it off, right? So think about maybe being, yeah, just, and you want it to go from dark to light. So not all light, not all, you want it to be both, right? Yes. So this brown has a reddish, orangish tint okay, to it. Okay, let it, let the colors be the colors they are. You'll, you'll learn more about the colors. The more time, you, you have to get to know the paint company and understand yeah. the paint colors. But a lot of times for me, like, I don't, you know, I don't, I think all the colors are actually beautiful. And look, we're not talking about realism here. We're talking about fantasy anyway. So, so it's okay. like kind of like this. I love it. Beautiful. So I would put, okay, when you put a lot of that kind of color at the bottom, you need to put it also at the top. So you need to put it around the other side of her head. So that would be the left side. You put it on the right. It's heavy on the right. You got to put it on the left. So I shouldn't go up anymore? I would not go up anymore. I would just simply put it on the left. I like how it's kind of a gradient and I like how it's subtly client. Yep, just, a, yep. Now think about just, yeah, beautiful. I love how you did like the semicircle there, right? So, yep, so be painterly, gorgeous. Now just blend that. So don't rub it, blend it. So use your finger or use a dry paintbrush or the tip of a paper towel and just gently blend it. Even though it's not the right color. Well, you're learning. I mean, it's it, it look, it's not yeah. you're not having a show tomorrow. You're learning a process. Okay. So you you if you you know, browns and blacks, I mean the good browns are the burnt umbers and the raw umber, right? And black, you is the best. Yeah, see, and now I like that. I do think that I do think it's a little, that color is a little bright, but I, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, who cares? I mean, a lot of people color. So take the top and just lightly blend it. Don't put any more paint, but you can carry that paint pretty far. So go over her head to the left, to the, to the left. Yeah. Yeah. With your finger, just so it doesn't look so un, uneven. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Good. Oh, you froze. And there's a lot of paint here. Right. So now, now let it for sit for a second. Now there's two things you can do. One is you can soften it a little bit by taking a little bit away. Uh, from far away, I actually really like it. I understand that maybe up close, it seems really intense to you. But you have to remember too, oh, yeah. you you really should not be looking at artwork closer than six feet away, right? So whenever you're making these decisions about what to do next, you should get yourself like a little easel 
right? Or a little shelf and put the piece on the shelf and walk back six steps and then look at it, right? Because nobody's going to come up to it, you know, two inches away from it yes. unless they buy it. Yes. And, and like, and who, who care? And after that, like, if they like it from far away, that's all that's important, right? Because right. they're never going to sit that close to it. So step away and see if it's, if the composition is working for you, you know, it, it, and hold, right. So for me, it's working and for you, it might be the intense. So you can soften the red a little bit by either blending another color into the red. So it's not so red or, yeah or removing a little bit of it with the paper towel. Okay. I think a little of both, maybe. Okay, and if you don't have a good brown or a dark blue, you know, you can buy those colors, right? Yeah, you know, what about my other, um, oh, those are encaustic. Yeah, you can't, you, well, you could, I mean, you, it, you won't like, the, you could, you, you'd have to wait for that to dry or heat gun it or whatever, whatever. Right. Let's just, we're almost done for today anyway. We've got about 10 more minutes because I'm going to give you an extra 10 minutes from when, um, from last time. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was so funny. I mean, I was. And I wanted to um, talk to you about how we can continue. Yeah, well, we can continue. Just, you have to figure out if you want to do hour sessions or two hours. I mean, we should definitely at least do one more where we cover um, encaustic paint. Sorry, let me. One last time. Okay. That's fine. We we know your phone. Okay, so so what day? Like, do Mondays the same time work for you? Mondays are always good for me. It's a good time for you. Mondays are always good, yeah. Mondays at four o'clock are good. So should we like have that on for now? We can, yeah, of course. And then um... let me see her before before. Let me see her. And then I would love for you to take some pictures of her and also put her somewhere where you can look at her throughout the day. You know, like in your kitchen or in your bedroom or you know, because you really need to um, sort of get your eye accustomed to looking at wax. And it was like I, how I was describing earlier when I was talking about looking at something through, you know, a prism, you know, multiple layers that have come together to form the final, the final picture. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you have the background, you have the wax layer, you have like all the scraping layers and then you have a colored layer and you almost have, you know what I mean? So consider them like four panels of glass. Yes. And you're looking at them together, compressed together as one thing. Okay. Well, it's pretty fun to think about that. Like yeah. if you kept a journal or a log of all the things that you added or did to the piece. I did. That right? would be interesting. It's like a little math equation, right? Yes. I'm just adding a little of that dark blue. Oh, good. How's that? That must be really pretty with that. that that's working out better. Yeah, because then, then that's going to allow you some shadow. If you wanted to add a lighter color, um, you know, like a lighter, a cream or a white or an off-white to the oh, arm. That's true, yeah. That could be nice, too. That could be nice, too, yeah. Kind of with the white going in Oh, here. I love it. Oh my God, There's I love it. a little it. more white. No, I, I really like it. I think it's really pretty. I mean, if anything, I would put the white like oh. in your necklace. You could put in a little bit. Too. Yeah, and if there's a highlight, is there like a highlight hitting her hair? I actually think that yeah. is kind of, I actually love her, the fiery hair. I think it's really beautiful. Is there like a, a sunlight, a sun ray, like something? 
I mean, in here, there may be just tiny pieces. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to get rid of the orange. Well, leave it. I mean, it's orange. Let don't don't like blending. Yeah, it's like it's like when you wear a sexy dress and you put a sweater on. Like, wear the sexy dress. It doesn't matter for right now. I mean, yeah. it's fine. We don't have brown, but you're gonna buy the brown. Just let it go. Okay. <laughs> I like it. I actually like it. I mean, your hair has like an orangey tint to it. I think it's pretty. Yes. Okay. I, let let it be. It don't I don't go down with white. Trying to hide it. White white is like my my I I struggle with. I want to add white, but white often you know makes everything pastelly and it it gets messy. It also makes everything kind of muddy. So you have to be wary of adding too much white. Okay. It's because it's easy to want to add white, but it's not like a crutch, you know? Yeah, but that cream over the, um, her necklace kind of did not work. Maybe I should put blue where her necklace is. Oh, the white didn't, well, let me say, I can't see. Let me show it to me. I, I don't know what your goal is well, and what your technique is. I started, but. I, no, I think it's fine. I, like I started to put beige here. Yeah, I don't mind that. I like it. It's a secondary color. Just let, don't overdo it. I think you should, I think we should stop for now. Okay. And I think honestly, you need to get, you need to get two colors. So write them down. You need to get um, graphite gray. I'm sorry, I should have told graphite you. Graphite. Did I not tell you? Gray. Graphite gray is like um, my goat. It's like, does because we're using black and white photos, graphite gray to me is like, um, it's sort of just part of the mix. You know what I mean? And that would be in the pigment stick, not yeah, the it's graphite gray. Yeah, you're going to love it because it just kind of like gives you a, a shader. It's a shader, right? So you can add it to any color as kind of a shadow area. It can be the shadow. It's just a great, great color. So graphite gray, and then I would buy a brown because um, brown is good for everything. Um, I have, you mean you don't need to buy black. It looks like it's you really don't need to buy black. I, it's like, I don't, don't buy black. I don't need you to have black. I mean, maybe okay. later you can decide that you want black, but right now you're fine with the graphite gray. And I like, um, you can get burnt umber or raw umber or any of the browns that you like. And when you go on RNF's site or when you see RNF's color palette, they're all beautiful. I mean, they don't make a bad color. I mean, you can quote me, tell them I said that, but they, I mean, they just don't, do not make an ugly color. Okay. So any color that you get is gonna be beautiful. All right, so, so the next time, the next, wait, I'm gonna turn the recording off first. So we can talk about.